No intro needed, let's get right to it. So you wanna become a signing agent, but you're not 100% sure how. Well, this is a video step-by-step -step tutorial on how you can become a signing agent in any state. And this is from someone who's been a signing agent for over four years. Stick around until the end, and I'll have some bonus info on how you can make a lot more money as a signing agent, whether this is a side income for you, or you wanna be a full-time entrepreneur. And don't worry, I'm not gonna try to sell you anything. I know how y'all get on here. So stick around. Okay, so we're doing the how to become a signing agent run through really quick here on Notion. You see, I got these little stamps on top. It's cool. Step one, you want to become a notary public. Now, what is the difference between a notary and a signing agent? A signing agent is just a notary who's been trained to handle loan documents. And lenders and title companies hire signing agents to assist in the last step of the loan process, right? So for example, someone's buying a home, you, the signing agent, will be there to confirm their identity and guide them through the documents and notarize all of their signatures. Now, there's no real difference between a signing agent and a notary. A signing agent just specializes in loan documents. And this is extremely lucrative because every day someone's buying, selling, refinancing, or doing something with their home. And all these require you, the signing agent, all right? So what are the requirements? You need to be at least 18 years old, a legal resident of the state or an employee in that state, no criminal record, and you need to complete a notary application which we will get to later in the video and you need to pass a state exam if applicable I'm in Maryland so we do have to take an exam quite easy but I'm also four years five years in so for me it wasn't hard and then you get a background check now this is required to be a signing agent but not always required to be a notary public let's get to the application so I got some links here so this is the link to become a notary now when you get here you see that there's a signing agent option ignore that for now until you get your notary commission so for now you just need to become a notary actually I'm gonna show you I'm gonna show you so if you click become a signing agent you see it says you have to be commissioned as a notary public in your state like that's a, a requirement so it's just gonna end up taking you back to becoming a notary in the first place so here become a notary now you see here it says become a Maryland notary and there's something I want you to see as far as price goes right so we're gonna get started all right so you see here you only need the basic one so you get the basic notary package and you see the stars mean that these things are required so there's a required Maryland state exam there's a required official notary seal and stamp required basic journal with privacy guard and it's 113 now I was also a notary in Virginia this is how I know that it's gonna be priced different because in, in Virginia you don't have to take a test as you can see it's only $90 here because there's no test you have to take you just get the notary stamp it's not even required that you get a journal in Virginia I personally would get one I, I recommend everybody gets a journal but it's not required in Virginia there's no test in Virginia you just become a notary and you kind of can do loan closings it's literally that simple so back to Maryland so you would click order now ignore the ENO insurance because you're gonna need more expensive ENO insurance later it's only gonna be like 120 a year nothing crazy I wouldn't add the NNA membership it depends it's not bad I just wouldn't and then you see they give you a choice to get your journal a choice of stamp get a black stamp um in Maryland we don't need the embosser but in DC you would need the embosser and then they just have this other stuff that they try to upsell you on you proceed to check out and there we go your estimated total oh they added the you know get out of here yeah we don't want that boom $113 for Maryland so get out of that because I'm not gonna buy that I'm already a notary so after about two or more weeks, you'll be able to get sworn in and receive your notary commission and now you're officially a notary public. It is important if you want to be a signing agent to know your state's restrictions. So you see here, signing agent state restrictions and you get to choose your state. I live in Maryland. Maryland has restrictions. Not all states have restrictions, but the ones that do are here. So in Maryland, to become a signing agent, you also need to get your title insurance producer's license. That's another test you'll have to take. Honestly, that's more money you'll have to pay. But I personally feel like it is worth it because it is an extra step that you have to take more money you have to pay and most people don't want to deal with that honestly four years ago when I first got my commission I wanted to become a signing agent and when I saw that I had to get this I just quit I was like I'm not dealing with it I'm gonna find something else I tried to wholesale real estate it was torture I, I was bad okay <laughs> but as you can see I ended up coming back and doing this anyway and most people don't want to deal so less people want to deal less competition for you which means the better you are there's less people we got people so that's it for Maryland in Virginia Virginia's interesting because Virginia they say you need your title insurance license only if you receive or handle money so if they're giving you a check at the table then you would deal with that this feels like more of a subject for a later video 
Yeah. But there's a workaround for it. If you want to know about it, just comment that you want to know about it below if you live in Virginia and I'll explain it to you. Okay, those are the restrictions. Become a notary signing agent, right? Now watch. Click become a signing agent, right? You can only do this after you've gotten your notary commission because here it says you must already be a notary in order to become a signing agent. So it sends you a become a notary link or just continue. So you would do this after you've gotten your notary commission. You can't do signings without being a notary, like literally. So, so this will do your background screening. This is the NNA notary signing agent exam is not the same as the one you took to become a notary in Maryland and then one year signing agent.com priority listing and this is $70 on top of what you've already paid we're done with that so now two weeks have gone by you've been waiting you went you got sworn in you are now a notary you can do loan closings so if you're not in Maryland you could just get going if you're in Maryland you also have to get your title insurance producer's license what about your supplies pro tip Get a mini stamp. I had to learn this the hard way. At first, I wanted to be cool. I had like a round stamp and it was just, there's like, they have little nooks and crannies for you to stamp in. And it just makes it a chore when you have a round stamp in a small rectangular space. But also, if you have a big rectangular stamp and it's a small rectangular space, it's still crazy. So get a mini stamp. It's just small. It's just a smaller stamp. They don't reject you for it. I would get this to start out with. And if you want cooler stamps later, do so. I was being extra at one point. I had like the big, real authority type of stamp but you still need your mini stamp to get those little spaces and you'll know what I mean once you start like they have these disrespectfully small spaces I don't know how they ever expected us to get a stamp in there so get your mini stamp it's $28 make sure your info on your stamp is accurate your name is spelled correctly if you're in a state that requires a notary registration number make sure the registration number is correct and your expiration date okay then get a notary journal I recommend getting this journal because it's just good for wherever you are. So universally, I would recommend this because some places require you to get fingerprints as well inside of the journal entry that you make. So get a journal and get this journal or browse around Amazon, find a journal you like, but get a journal that complies with what you need in your state. Okay. Now here's the most important. This will be your baby. Okay. This is your dual tray laser printer. You will need a laser printer because they print much faster and much more efficiently than a regular ink printer. An ink printer takes forever to print. When you're doing loan closings, you're printing out documents that are like 150 pages long. Plus you need to print out a copy for the borrower, which is 150 times two. So 300 pages. An ink printer will not print as fast as a laser printer. It will run through paper faster than a laser printer. And it's just, trust me on this one. Get a dual tray laser printer, okay? Get a dual tray laser printer. Um, loan documents come in different sizes as well. And that's why you need the dual tray. So it's two trays. So you can print two different paper sizes at the same time. So you will have to print letter size papers and legal size paper at the same time. I may show you how it works in something else, but you'll see it. It'll print like four legal papers, then five letter papers, then 16 legal papers then 40 letter papers and it kind of goes kind of like that and if you are trying to print them one by one is doable when I first started I didn't have enough money to get a dual tray so I was printing <laughs> in a one tray and I had to print the letter first and then the legal and then I had to put them in the right order and God forbid you lose count while you're doing it. It's, it's truly a chore. You don't need it to be a color printer. It could just be black and white, a regular type of thing. So I personally use a HP printer. It's my baby. I love it. It's never given me any problems. A lot of people recommend a brother printer. I hate it. I hated the brother printer. I have a Mac and the brother just didn't agree with my Mac. Like it just, it just kept messing up. I hated it. Like to my core, I'll never touch it again. I have a brother scanner, but the brother printer, I hated it. HP has never given me any problems. A lot of the title opposite offices, offices I go to have an HP printer. It works really well for them. I recommend HP. I recommend this one. I'll have the links to everything below. As you can see, it's expensive. It has a scanner on it and sometimes they want you to scan papers back. I'd invest in a good printer up front because it's literally your whole business is ran on this. Next, scanner. So this one is optional. You don't have to get a scanner. I personally recommend it. I, when I first started, was taking pictures on my phone to send to them when they would ask me to scan papers and show them. And that is a chore if they want you to scan the entire 150 page package on your phone. It was taking me like 30 minutes and they want them relatively fast. I was just looking crazy, but you know, you do, you do what you gotta do. So the portable one that I had, so I would go to FedEx and I would just scan at FedEx before I send the documents off. So I would have my laptop with me, my portable scanner with me, and it would be this one. I don't fill my days as much cause I just don't have to. So I just have a printer at home. FedEx is close to my home that I've moved to now. So I don't need to, and I don't go as far anymore. I just don't 
do as much because I don't have to anymore. But to start off, I would recommend the portable one. You could print it at home if you want to, but it's portable. If you're ever in a bind, you're out, you have like nine signings in a day, going home to try to send documents to them just doesn't make sense. Your day will not fit in, right? And we want to make as much money as possible. So yeah, take it from me. And your notary bag. So in the beginning, I did not have a notary bag. I had like this bag, this small bag I would put the documents in, but you have legal papers in. Look, legal papers are like, they're long, you see? So a regular bag doesn't typically hold legal papers. So um, yeah, it was just, it was crumpling them. So I would start to hold them in my hands, but if it rains outside, I was like tucking them in my jacket, trying to get through. If you can afford a notary bag, get a notary bag. It saves a lot, like look at it. So here it is, here's the inside. You can put your journal here, your documents here, your stamp here, your pens, your business cards could fit in there. That's where I put mine. It's a good investment, I recommend it. Then just your basics, you want pens, you want paper clips, you want rubber bands, cause these are thick packages. Sometimes I put them in rubber bands when I put it in the bag, so they don't get like ruffled, basically. And business cards, cause you wanna be able to pass them out and you want people to call you if they liked you, okay? Now, lastly, we want to get educated. This, if you don't take anything from me in this video, please, please get educated, okay? Your job is extremely important. Just because this is simple to do, doesn't mean you take it lightly. You represent the lender and the title company. So so when I get to the table, nobody ever asks like, oh, who do you work for? Okay, they do, but more times than they do, they don't. And they think you work for the bank or they think you work for the title company. They, they basically think you work for whoever they've been talking to. So you are a representative of them. And you want to make a good impression because you want them to call you again so you can keep making money, right? And you can single-handedly ruin an entire deal and cost people thousands of dollars. I've heard horror stories. People have lost checks. People have said the wrong thing to the borrower and the borrower canceled everything. It's Things get crazy, so be educated. Don't mess things up, because yeah, it can go south for you. Don't ruin your business before you get started, you know? And make sure you're up to date on not only your state laws as a notary, but on how to be a good signing agent and a good business owner, because that's what this is. It's your business, okay? So get on YouTube, take courses, do your Googles, ask to take documents home to study them. I've done that. I've taken the package home and I've literally read it. And now I know more than most notaries, because most notaries won't read it. They don't know what it means. So do whatever you can to be as educated as possible and that will do wonders for how much money that you make in this industry. Lastly, well not lastly, but there have been uh, a flood of new notaries in the past couple years. It's just been like a notary boom for some reason, right? The con of this is there's a lot more competition. So the days where you just had to be a decent notary to thrive in this space are gone. You actually have to be good at it or someone's gonna replace you. It's gonna happen. But the pro means there's a lot more bad competition too. Like there has been a flood of just, they don't know what they're doing, bad, bad notaries. They haven't taken the time to get educated like I'm telling you. So if you take the time to educate yourself and become great at this, you will become a breath of fresh air to any company who hires you. And they've had to deal with all the uneducated notaries. So they're just going to love you. It's like, oh God, you don't know what I've been dealing with. I've heard this plenty of times. So you are the someone who easily replaces someone else and your bank account will thank you. Now a super bonus is now that the real estate market has slowed down, this is the best time to become a notary who actually knows what they're doing. All of those new notaries who came in in the past couple years because they thought this were easy are dropping out. The uneducated notaries are dropping Dropping up. The notaries who think the signing agent space is dead are now dropping out. So this leaves a ton of opportunity for someone driven like you to come in and really make a name for yourself in your area. And that's what I really love about the notary industry. Your only competition is the people in your area. You know what I mean? So me being a notary here, I'm not doing California stuff because I'm not in California. I'm a notary in my area and I'm not driving all the way to the other side of Maryland most of the time. So a notary in the other side of Maryland and me, we're not in competition with each other. And you are only one person. You can't do two things at the same time, right? So all you have to do is kind of outdo everybody who's around you, which is not hard. So make a name for yourself in your area, your city, your county. And once things speed up again, you will already be in the perfect position to make a ton of money. You will already have all the traction you need to capitalize quickly, whether being a signing agent is your side hustle or your main hustle, you're gonna get a lot of calls because they already know you. They don't wanna go through the hassle of finding another notary and they suck. 
right? So I personally have taken a ton of courses. I've read a bunch of books. So if you want some recommendations, let me know in the comments. And all of the links that I went to in the video are in the description below. So let me know if you have any Maryland specific questions because I'm just, that's where I'm educated. I'd be wrong to try to educate you on how to be a notary in California. I could teach you how to get your notary commission, but there are laws and stuff. I just wouldn't know, you know? And I'll do my best to help you out. So good luck on your notary journey.